Welcome to HUD's vignette series on energy performance contracting. A series of eight vignettes were developed under a contract with HUD's energy branch, Public Housing Financial Management Division. Today, vignette number eight will focus on cross subsidization of incentives for an EPC. My name is Matt PC. I am the principal for Facility Strategies Group. FSG is a consulting engineering firm specializing in energy efficiency, sustainability, and renewable energy projects. I have experience in energy engineering, energy project development, finance, engineering, commissioning, and measurement and verification, and have worked in public housing for more than 20 years. The vignettes are designed for PHAs with an EPC. HUD wants to improve your overall understanding of energy performance contracts, specifically to identify eligible costs, calculate savings, and request EPC incentives on HUD forms 52722 and 52723 as part of your annual operating submit subsidy submission. Vignette series include the following topics, measurement and verification reports, MMV, baseline adjustments, project costs, frozen rolling base savings, resident paid utility savings, add-on subsidy savings, 75% project rule, and cross-subsidization of EPC incentives. For those of you that are new to EPCs, the vignettes can serve as an introduction to key EPC terms and principles required to implement a successful EPC. As we go through the slides, we will introduce you to critical HUD program references, and you will need to become familiar with uh, before you can undertake an EPC. After completing this vignette, participants should be able to understand how cross-subsidization works, differentiate and compute components of each incentive, anticipate how cross-subsidy is applied to excess savings, and calculate cross-subsidy using HUD's calculator. The vignette on cross-subsidization will also consider how incentives combine support uh, for each other within a cash flow, how to create excess savings, and how cross-subsidy calculations increase or reduce savings recapture. So for today's agenda, our discussion today will walk us through using the various incentives singly or in, and in combination, combining the savings and, and cost streams from the various incentives, and discuss examples of cross-subsidization in different scenarios. The energy incentives can be used separately or in combinations for various measures and sites. This flexibility allows risks to be shared between concerns for savings persistence, forward-looking rates, verification methods and costs, and equipment selection and performance. The frozen base and RPU methods follow a similar method where the savings are directed towards retrofits by committing that at least 75% of savings must be used to cover project costs, while additional subsidy is limited by the lesser of savings or cost. Excess savings can be shared between methods to cover shortfalls, but the incentive restrictions must be enforced. To determine the cross-subsidization opportunities, the FRB and RPU savings and costs are combined. They are then separated from the add-on subsidy savings and costs and ratios are used to determine excess savings and which incentive creates the limiting condition. Sharing excess add-on subsidy savings to cover costs with FRB RPU shortfalls is referred to as cross-subsidization. It requires HUD approval. Additionally, FRB RPU can be used to cover shortfalls in add-on subsidy. It can always be done and does not require HUD approval. Taking example figures for a hypothetical HUD cost summary or approval letter, the total project costs, MMV costs, debt, financing costs, and replacement reserve costs are summed to determine the project costs. For the project, this is calculated in aggregate, but for each repayment year, the actual costs for debt, MMV, service fees, replacement reserve are used to determine excess savings. The costs and savings associated with each incentive are separated and added together. In the example, the FRB portion 
is 91.9% of costs, and the add-on subsidy portion is 8.1% of costs. RPU is not used in this example. Applying excess from one incentive to another can occur in any contract year if actual savings are short under one incentive and in excess under another. Cross-subsidization of incentives is applicable when approved with the HUD review. This applies to projects after 2013. Older projects that have been restructured after 2013 may also be eligible for cross-subsidization. If there is no shortfall in either add-on subsidy or frozen rolling base RPU, normal rules apply to each separately. The use of cross-subsidization must be included in the HUD approval letter. If both incentives are in shortfall, cross-subsidization isn't available since there are no excess savings to be shared. We'll explore the range of options in a, in a theoretical project. What happens when we have excess FRB RPU savings coupled with a shortfall in add-on subsidy or an, or an excess in add-on subsidy savings? Similarly, what happens when we have a shortfall in FRB uh, RPU savings coupled with a shortfall in excess add-on subsidy? It is always allowed without special permission for excess frozen rolling base and resident paid utility to cover shortfalls in add-on subsidy before application of the 75% rule. Cross-subsidization from add-on subsidy to cover shortfalls in frozen rolling base and resident paid is only allowed with permission. When add-on subsidy has a shortfall in savings, there is a potential to use frozen rolling base RPU excess to cover add-on subsidy associated project costs. When frozen rolling base and resident paid utilities are in excess, these savings are compared to the 75% threshold. Taking the total FRB RPU savings of 4 million C, C rho F and applying 75% gives threshold value of 3 million. At least 3 million must be applied to the project costs. Comparing this value to frozen rolling base RPU associated project costs, 2 million, there would be an extra 1 million that does not comply with the requirement to utilize at least 75% of savings towards project costs. Excess frozen rolling base and resident paid utility savings can be used to offset any shortfall, unpaid, add-on subsidy costs. In our example, that is 500,000 uh, C variable C. Using $500,000 of the $1 million excess FRB RPU savings, the authority only sees 500,000 recaptured, see variable J. Because add-on subsidy is in shortfall, there is a savings benefit available to reduce the recapture on the frozen rolling base and resident paid utility. When add-on subsidy is in excess by any amount, all of these excess savings are recaptured. In the example, add-on subsidy costs are zero. See variable B. This might be where the work was fully funded by state or utility funds, so did not use EPC proceeds to finance the work. When FRB, RPU are in excess, these savings are compared to the 75% threshold. Taking the total FRB, RPU savings of 3.5 million, see variable F, and applying 75%, Gives, th gives threshold value of 2.625 million. This is $125,000 more than the project cost for FRB RPU, C variable J. Because the add-on subsidy and the FRB RPU costs are in excess, there is no option to apply excess frozen rolling base and RPU to add-on subsidy or for excess add-on subsidy to cross-subsidize the FRB RPU costs. Excess savings in both cash streams are recaptured. When add-on subsidy has a shortfall in savings, there is a potential to use frozen rolling base and RPU excess savings to cover add-on subsidy associated project costs, except when 
frozen rolling base and RPU also has a shortfall. The aggregate short of $1.5 million propagates entirely through to the cash flow, net cash avail available after costs, see variable C, variable H, and variable M. Because both frozen rolling base, RPU, and add-on subsidy is in shortfall, there is no cross-subsidization benefit available to alleviate the cash shortage, but there is also no recapture of savings. When add-on subsidy has an excess and frozen rolling base resident paid utility has a shortfall relative to their separate project costs, the extra add-on subsidy can be used to cover frozen rolling base RPU costs. The 75% rule doesn't apply to frozen rolling base RPU when the project has a, a shortfall in the FRB RPU savings. Because frozen rolling base RPU is in shortfall, see variable H, add-on subsidy can be applied using cross-subsidization to alleviate a portion of the cash shortage. In this case, the excess add-on subsidy is $500,000, see variable C, and the short in frozen rolling base RPU is 1.5 million, see variable H. Because add-on subsidy savings are less than the shortfall in frozen rolling base RPU savings, the entire amount of excess add-on subsidy can be applied to the FRB shortfall, resulting in no recapture of add-on subsidy savings and a net shortfall to the project of $1 million, see variable M. Knowledge check. Cross-subsidization of add-on subsidy to frozen rolling base resident paid utility allows excess savings from one incentive to cover shortfalls with another incentive. True. Excess savings can result in recapture of savings within the allocation rules of frozen rolling base resident paid utilities and add on subsidy incentives. True. Not achieving savings makes it hard to cash flow in EPC. True. Excess savings can be used in both directions. That is, excess frozen rolling base resident paid utility can cover shorts and add on subsidy and vice versa. True. When add on subsidy is used singly, savings can exceed project costs. False. Thank you for attending HUD's vignette series on energy performance contracting. We hope that the series has been helpful to your understanding of energy performance contracting, and we encourage you to listen to all eight of the vignettes in this series. You may email any comments or questions to HUD at PIH underscore EPC underscore policy at HUD.gov.